Welcome to the KCTCS application for admission. Whether you're a high school student, a returning student, a brand new student, or just looking to take a class on the side, we're here for you at KCTCS. Now let's get started with the application for admission. Before we begin, you'll need a personal email address, your social security number if you have one, name and address of the high school you attended, and the name and address of any colleges you may have attended. It is extremely important that you have a personal email address. It will be used to verify your identity, access your application, and set up or reset your password. Note that you should not use an email address that you are unable to access, one that belongs to someone else, or a kctcs.edu address. If you ever need assistance during the application, there is a live chat feature in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, or you can call for assistance. As you proceed through the application for admission, if you experience any issues when filling out the application, please try a different web browser such as Firefox or Microsoft Edge. If you are using a mobile device, please make sure your device's operating system is at the latest version. To begin, Enter your personal email address in the email address field and then select send verification code. A pop-up box will confirm that an email has been sent to the address you entered. Retrieve the verification code and enter it into the verification code box. After entering the code, select confirm. You are now ready to complete the application for admission. The following official documents are required for admission. One, your official high school transcript with graduation dates or your GED test scores and all college transcripts. Transcripts may be shared with all KCTCS colleges. Number two, results from placement testing such as ACT, SAT, or other placement test. And three, for visiting or transient students only, documentation of good academic standing from your current college will be required. There may be additional requirements for international applicants. After submission of the application, you will receive communications from the college regarding any additional requirements and the next steps. As you complete the application for admission, note that any fields designated with an asterisk are required. First, select the college and campus you wish to attend. You'll notice that the logo at the top of the application will change depending on which college you select. Next, enter your personal information. The USA Social Security number is required if you are eligible to claim a federal education tax credit. If the college is required to file an information tax statement on your behalf, such as Form 1098-T, failure to furnish a Social Security number may result in individual penalties by the IRS. The USA Social Security number is required if you are applying for federal financial aid or if you expect to receive KEYS funds. Failure to provide this number may result in a delay in the distribution of your aid. If you are foreign-born and do not have a U.S. Social Security number, change the slider bar from no to yes. This will indicate that you are foreign-born or do not have a Social Security number. Notice that the Social Security field is not required. In this example, we will leave the Social Security field blank. Next, enter your date of birth. The date of birth field is required. Next, select your gender. This is not a required field. Next, enter your home or present address. If you need to change the country, you can use the magnifying glass icon to search for your country. Note that when you enter a zip code, the city, state, and county will populate. If you need to make any corrections, change the slider bar from no to yes. 
you will then be able to make changes. Your email address is the email you enter to retrieve your verification code. Next, select a password. Passwords should be a minimum of eight characters and contain at least one uppercase letter, one lowercase letter, one number, and one symbol. Please note that there are certain symbols that cannot be used, such as the pipe symbol and spaces. The passwords must match in order to proceed. Next, select a hint question. This will be used if you forget your password. Next, select Create Account. If you did not provide your social security number, a pop-up box will remind you that you need to enter the social security number if you plan to claim a federal education tax credit, if you're applying for federal financial aid, or if you're utilizing a Keys scholarship. Failure to furnish the social security number may result in individual penalties by the IRS. Select OK. You may go back and enter the social security number unless you are foreign born or do not have a US social security number and then select create account. It is not required to enter the social security number. In this example, we will not enter a social security number. Select create account. You are now ready to complete your application. On the left side of your screen are the areas you must complete on your application. You may go directly to any previously visited section. Currently, we are on the personal information section. Everything entered previously has carried forward. If you do not need to add or change anything, click Next Step. The next section is additional information. This information is not required, but here you can designate your phone number, if you have any USA military status, and an emergency contact. In the event you cannot finish the application, there is a Save for Later button You'll be able to retrieve your application and start back from where you left off. Select Next Step. The next section is Citizenship. Are you a U.S. citizen? Depending on how you answer this question will determine if further questions appear. If you select No, another question appears asking if you are a permanent resident, a VAWA self-petitioner, special immigrant juvenile, refugee, asylee, parolee, or a DACA recipient. Again, note depending on if you answer yes or no, additional questions may appear. If answering no, the applicant will be asked, do you plan to study in the U.S.? Select yes or no. Next, the country of birth must be designated. For more information on how to select the country of birth, select the blue information icon. A search help box will appear. Use the magnifying glass to search for your country of birth. If the country is not listed in the search results, click on Search Criteria and enter the country name in the description field. Click the search button and choose the appropriate country. As an example, we will click the magnifying glass, expand the search criteria, and type in the country. Please remember, as you answer questions on the application, additional questions may or may not appear. When all questions have been answered, the Next Step button will activate. In this example, we will specify that we are a U.S. citizen. When finished with the citizenship page, select Next Step. Ethnicity is the next section of the application. 
Note that this is not a required page and you can select Next Step. Otherwise, answer the questions if you desire. The next section is to designate your application term. When do you plan to start taking classes at the college you are applying to? Select the term from the drop-down box. A new question appears. Are you currently enrolled in high school or homeschool? Depending on how you answer the question will determine the next fields that appear. If you select yes, a box will ask you when will you graduate from high school. If you answer no, additional questions will appear asking what type of high school diploma you have earned. If we select that a high school diploma was earned, an additional field will ask when did you graduate. Another question will appear asking if you are currently taking college classes. Answer yes or no. If you answer no, another question will ask if you've ever taken college classes. If you answer yes, you will be asked to provide college information. If we specify that a GED or other high school equivalency was taken, a box will appear asking when you earned your GED. You will then be presented with the same questions regarding college experience. If you answer, I did not graduate from high school or earn a GED diploma, then you will be asked, when did you last attend high school? After designating the last date you attended high school, you will be asked about your college experience. In this example, we will specify that we have the high school diploma. If you are not applying to be a high school dual credit student, you will notice a preferred name page on the application. We will discuss this later in the tutorial. When you are finished with this page, select Next Step. If you designated high school experience, you will be asked to enter the high school state and school name. If you need to change the country, you can use the magnifying glass to select a different country. Enter the two-letter state abbreviation. Begin typing the name of your high school. A search will appear and show you matching schools that matched what you typed. Select the school from the list. If your school did not appear, select the magnifying glass icon. If you found your school from the list, Click Add This School. Your school will be listed at the bottom of the page. If you cannot find your school using the lookup, type the full name of the school and press the Add This School button. Enter any additional information. After entering the additional information, select OK. If you made a mistake and need to remove the high school you indicated, place a check mark next to the school and select Delete Selected. In this example, we will use a school that populates from the lookup. Click Next Step. If you indicated any college experience, including dual credit, you must identify all colleges attended and submit official college transcripts. Students transferring from one KCTCS college to another KCTCS college do not need to submit an official KCTCS transcript. To search for your college, enter the country, state, and begin typing in the college name. 
do not use abbreviations such as WKU. Select your school from the resulting list and press the Add This School button. If the school is not found, type the full name of the school, press the Add This School button, and enter any additional information. After selecting the college from the resulting list, click Add This School. A pop-up box will ask dates of attendance. Use the drop-down box to indicate the from and to date. Were you suspended from this college due to poor academic performance? Answer yes or no. Click OK. Continue adding additional colleges if needed. Select Next Step. The next section of the application is in regards to your program of study. Are you planning in the future to pursue a bachelor degree at a four-year college or university? Answer yes or no. Do you prefer to take your classes primarily online, primarily in person, or no preference? Next, select a program of study. If you choose a selective admissions program, a pop-up box will indicate that it is selective admissions. The message will indicate which program you will be placed in while you complete any prerequisite classes and or await admission to the program. Select OK. To change your program of study, select the link next to program of study. If you choose a program that is a certificate or a diploma, you may not be eligible for financial aid. Select OK. Depending on which program of study you select, you may be asked to enter additional information, including the academic plan or area of interest. When you are finished entering information for program of study, select Next Step. The residency section includes questions to determine your residency for tuition purposes. Please take your time and answer each question to the best of your ability. Have you lived in Kentucky for the past 12 months? Answer yes or no. Does a living parent or legal guardian live in Kentucky? Select yes or no. Are you a family member with a valid dependent ID of an active duty military member? Select yes or no. Do you consider yourself a Kentucky resident? Select yes or no. When you are finished answering the questions regarding residency, select Next Step. If eligible, applicants can enter a preferred first name. Students who are high school students applying to be dual credit will not have the option to enter a preferred first name. The preferred first name field is optional. If you would like to designate a preferred first name at a later time, you may do so through student self-service or by contacting the student records office. Select Next Step. The final page of the application is the submission page. Here you can review all of the answers to the questions from the application. Please review the data you have entered prior to submitting your application. If any data needs to be corrected, select Previous Step and you will be returned to the data entry pages to make corrections. You may also use the menu on the left-hand side to jump directly to any previously visited section. Unless otherwise indicated, all information should be complete and accurate. Withholding or providing false information may make you ineligible for admission or enrollment. You'll be officially admitted to the college of your choice once we receive all required documentation. If you decide not to enroll, your application materials will be retained on file for one year. 
Although there is not an application fee, by submitting this form, you acknowledge responsibility for all financial obligations you incur if you enroll as a student at a KCTCS college, including any cost associated with the collection of your account. When you are ready to submit your application, select Confirm and Submit. Congratulations! Please make note of your application reference number and, if given, your KCTCS ID number. In some instances, you may not receive your ID upon submission and will receive it at a later time. After completing your application, it is important to check your email you provided for information regarding next steps. This will include things like when and how you can set up your user account, financial aid information, enrolling in classes, and more. Congratulations! You've successfully completed your application for admission.